Hey, I'm Alex Oliveira. I've been doing digital marketing since 2009. It's a wonderful industry. It's um, really changed my life in so many ways. And I'm always just trying to give back now, um, whether it's to business owners or students like yourself. And with FAU, I've had the opportunity for seven years of working with students. I've had so many interns from there. So such a great experience working with FAU and the students there. But this is about you guys tonight. So the, the talk I'm gonna to give tonight is about unlocking the power of digital marketing for your career and beyond. As I said, it's, a, it's in high demand, has been consistently, and will continue this way for a long time. So for those of you that are gonna stay in the industry, um, it's, it's just gonna be really good for you. I, I have dozens and dozens of students from Lynn, FAU, UM, all the schools in South Florida who have gone on to work for agencies, for brands, big companies like Google, Meta, and others. So it's so nice to see sort of where everybody has gone. So it'd be interesting about with you guys as well. Here's some of the companies that I've worked with. I also have a lot of um, experience with nonprofits. That's a different world that you might not think about as a choice for when you graduate. But I think you guys should give it a, a, um, a chance. And if you already have volunteered for a nonprofit, maybe it's a church, maybe it's the YMCA, um, good. But think about talking to them about the opportunities that exist in that world because um, absolutely there are big opportunities. So the question, and I'm going to share an article with you guys later that I read today, specifically talks about this age group, your age group, which I'm assuming are all Gen Z, right? And um, it's it's talking about the cities that you guys are going to. So this data talks about the net migration from, you know, uh, your age group migrating from, let's say, South Florida to bigger cities like Washington, D.C. and New York. But the main question that I get from HR professionals or human resource managers, talent acquisition, is... Remote work versus hybrid versus in-person. So the first thing I'd like for you to think about is that. Are you seeking one or the other or it doesn't matter? If you're graduating, are you just like, I need a job, I'll go wherever that job exists. So I think you have to make that negotiation with yourself up front and really think think through what you're willing to do, right? So... Um, I, I, I've been remote with my company since 2016. So for me, the hybrid and remote works very well. I think the only, the only time I don't see a fit for someone to do remote or hybrid is, it, is when they, they don't have that level of independence. And, and um, really, sometimes for some people, it's just they're social. They want to be in the office. They want to do that whole, it's, it's a different culture, right? So it's, it's not bad. You just have to figure it out so that you don't end up somewhere where it's not going to work out for you. And then my other question for you guys to think about, and you guys can either write this down, and then when we open up for Q&A, we can discuss this. Uh, really want to talk to you about what your experiences are so far as young digital marketers uh, is have you marketed products or services maybe it's your own product and service maybe it's a a small business or maybe it's an agency that you're working for so i when i open up the floor i'm going to ask for you guys to raise your hands chime in and just share with with all of us your experience there because um there's a lot of good stuff there all right so moving on brand machines these are some of the I, I don't endorse any of these companies. I mean, some of these companies I, I don't even like myself, but they are considered great brands by someone out there, right? Um, and, and it's because they have the big marketing budgets. So what I would like for you guys to do as a homework is to go to the LinkedIn page for these companies. Uh, let's pick Lego. And let's say you have an affinity to Lego because you want to be in the toy industry. Go to, the, go to Lego's LinkedIn page. And then sort it by department. So you can sort it by marketing. And in marketing, you're going to find people who are doing, you know, their, their may, maybe their paid search, their SEO, social media, content. Look through those positions and look at, at the people's tenure there. How long have they been there? What does their job entail? Study 
the, these positions, it will help you. It will help you um, fine tune your LinkedIn, your resume, but it will also tell you what your future might look like. And it's all free and open, super transparent. So it's a, an awesome exercise. Um, this is the great uh, Seth Godin. You know, he talks about the fact that if products aren't found, then they're not good, right? And it's true. So many great, not big companies, but smaller companies, smaller businesses, um, startups, they, they offer great products and services. But if they don't have the right marketing, specifically digital marketing, it goes nowhere. The company just doesn't seem to grow, right? So you can, you can already have an understanding, I'm sure, that marketing and sales, they go hand in hand. Like, if marketing is not doing a great job, there's no sales. So it's awesome to be in that world where you are supporting the overall business growth. So now here are some dead or struggling brands that that uh, some are maybe still around, but have trust issues like uh, Wells Fargo, right? Can't be trusted. Sorry if anybody's Family works for Wells Fargo or Comcast, but these are just the companies that have done a, a bad job. They didn't move fast enough like Blockbuster or Radio Shack or Sears. They, they didn't move fast enough with the technology and they didn't listen to the consumers. You guys are the consumers. We're all consumers. And so they were disrupted and the bigger competitor came in and took their lunch. So why, why do I tell you that? Because... At these companies, presumably, they were great people. If we were looking back at their LinkedIn profiles 10 years ago, the same exercise I gave you, we would have looked at some executive at Sports Authority and gone, wow, look, they're a great marketer. And then they became a part of an organization that went downhill. Why? Well, because the, the C-level, the management, they weren't willing to evolve and so even if you had great marketing, it didn't matter. It wasn't going to go forward. Now, I hope that you guys never become a part of such organization, but it is possible that you're in an organization where you're saying, guys, I see the next big thing. Maybe it's the uh, Web3 or the, the meta or whatever world it is, right? NFTs. And we need to do this. And then the, the bosses and the CEOs go, no, we're, we're going to stick to what we've been doing for 100 years. So you have to be bold enough to, to be able to convince people. And if you can't, then you just move on. All right. Your favorite brands and why? I want you guys to think about that when you do, your, when you do that little homework. So moving on to your career choices. Digital marketing discipline is the number one criteria I want you to think about. Where do you want to fall into? Is it content? Is it SEO, paid search, social, email marketing? These five disciplines or channels of uh, digital marketing are the top channels for small, medium, and large businesses. Now, there's a bunch more like affiliate marketing and um, influencer and so many others, but these are the top ones. It's likely that if you want a successful, successful career in digital marketing, you're going to have to pick one of these channels and be, a, be really great at it. It's kind of hard to, to be a unicorn and be great at all of them. That, that only happens with time. Um, now the next criteria I want you to think about is, do I want to work for a small to medium business? That's the SMB. Do I want to work for an agency or do I want to work for a brand? So different, right? If you work for an agency, you're going to work on a bunch of different accounts for different industries that serve different audiences, right? For different products and services. Whereas if you go to a brand, let's say you wanted to work for Dunkin' Donuts, and you applied for a digital marketing uh, uh, position there. That's all you're working on is Dunkin' Donuts. So you can really focus, really laser focus on one brand. Or FAU, let's say you were going to work for the digital marketing for FAU. You're doing education for one company. Whereas if you work for an agency, it pulls you in a lot of directions. Now, I can make a case for both that there are pros and cons. But it's just something that you have to think about. And then, of course, the industry, product, or service, right? So you might say, you know what? I don't like working in the business-to-business -business, uh, uh, side of, of, of um, this company. Let's say Dell. Dell would be a good example. I actually have a cousin who works for Dell. Um, 
For Dell, you could work B2B. That means that every day, whether you're doing marketing or sales, you're going to be talking to other companies. Whereas if you work for Dow Consumer Services, you're doing more the e-commerce and selling products directly to consumers. So different. You're still doing digital marketing for both, but it's a, it's a world of difference there. All right, I know I, I already gave you a lot before I even get to the agenda, but now we're gonna get to the, 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 the part where we talk about digital marketing a little bit more. But before I do, one more thing. You're gonna see these little buttons that I put here um, on probably about 15 pages. I did that intentionally. This one says free assessment. When we're done with this presentation, DOA is gonna have the presentation. And when you click on these buttons, they're linked with that resource for you. These are resources that are really important for you. And these buttons, I want you to really start to think about digital marketing. Everything you do online comes with a call to action button. So this is that CTA button that I'm sure you guys are learning about through, through uh, uh, the StuCant products that you, that you do. Now, this one is a free assessment. So if you click on it, it's gonna take you to a website called Test Gorilla, and it will allow you to do a disk assessment. Uh, what does this have to do with digital marketing? Everything. If you, your behavior, if you don't understand your behavior yet, which I didn't at your age, by the way. As a matter of fact, I didn't get to know disk profiles until I was in my 30s. I know I look a lot younger, but really, I didn't get to know that until later on. And I wish I knew it earlier because the disk will help you understand where you fall on dominance, influence, steadiness, and consciousness. I was talking to you about an agency, the example, an agency that does that, that says, hey, Alex, you're going to work for an agency. I'm going to give you 10 different accounts with 50 campaigns. My mind's going all over. If I'm a person that scores high on a steadiness, I'm going to do horrible in that agency, right? Whereas if I know I'm like that type of person who's very steady and I like to focus on one, right? Guess what? I should probably go work for a brand because a brand is going to be better for a steady person. So this has a disc profile has everything to do with what, what channel, what industry, what type of business you go work for in digital marketing. All right. So take the assessment. If you've done one, share that with us at the end. I want to ask you about your experience there but super, super important. And um, attitude, critical skills, they're very important. If you talk to most HR managers, the five uh, that are listed here, prob problem solving, communication, self-direction or independence, drive and adaptability, those are the five. So if you're getting interviewed today by Nike or uh, Google or any big company, that talent person, talent acquisition manager, they're, yes, they're looking at your skills. What certifications do you have? What degree did you have? Like, great, those things are nice, but those are skills that you will continuously improve what, when you get to the job. But they're gonna ask you questions to figure out these soft skills, which I call them critical skills. So the first thing that you have to do is say, what is my attitude and what's my mindset towards these uh, uh, critical skills. And if you're lacking in one, we all are. I mean, no matter how long you've, you've, you've been on earth, we can always improve. That I am certain of. I'm always trying to improve, right? So definitely look at that. Now moving on to your brand, because when you get out there, guess what? Even though you're looking for a, a, a job in digital marketing, you're going to have to market yourself. You're going to have to sell yourself. So it's important that you're LinkedIn and your your digital footprint um, make sense. So if you have anything that's negative, make sure you figure out a way to get rid of it because people are going to Google you. They're just going to do that. They're going to go on social media and they're going to dig up all your old TikTok posts that you're like, oh my God, I can't believe somebody like recorded this and then shared it. So really important that you figure out your own reputation. And then these are some of the branding pitfalls. Probably the biggest one, I would say, is um, the, the, the bottom one, discriminatory comments. I have experienced this with people who come to, you know, look for a job and then you do a search and then you find out that they're like, you know, 
a big Nazi empathizer. And most companies are just going to walk away from you at that point. So you just got to be careful. Social media can be great in some ways, toxic in, in others. So be really careful with your brand. Now, complete your LinkedIn profile. No one is going to look at, at, at um, giving you an opportunity if you don't have your LinkedIn profile um, properly uh, filled out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Obviously, you guys are just starting out. But um, some of the things that you want to look at is, for example, the build resume. If you go on LinkedIn and you click the little more button and you go to build resume, right from there, it can take all your information, right, from LinkedIn and build it into a pretty resume. And what, why, why, why would you do that? Well, the reason you do that is because for the talent manager, and even if you're doing this just for an internship, it makes my job easier if I'm trying to hire you and the resume matches the LinkedIn. What I often see is that they both look very different and outdated and, and I'm going, what? You're making my job harder. So just make sure that they, they match and LinkedIn did, did this intentionally. And then you could save it as a PDF. You don't have to have a super creative um, uh, resume. That's more for creative people. Um, but that's an easy thing to do. Uh, this one is just a piece of advice that I'm going to give you guys is time management. Time management is everything. So uh, when it comes to your apps, uh, make sure whether you have Android or iPhone, make sure that you're managing how much time you spend on your phone and what apps. I do that and I sometimes surprise myself that I'm like, oh my God, what? I spent 50 minutes on Spotify listening to podcasts today? What's the matter with me? I got work to do. So just time management is so, is so important, right? And you're going to get asked these questions when you're out there looking for jobs in digital marketing. So I know I'm moving fast, but um, I want to ask you about your superpower. And if you could write it down, and then we could share at the end. I know we're going to share a lot of stuff in the Q&A. But think about your superpower. Your superpower is just that. Is whether it's a soft skill, one of the top five soft, soft skills that we talked about. Or whether it's a skill, just a skill. And, and if, you, if you look out a few years, I know I, I don't like the question, where are you going to be in five years? Because no one knows. But like even if you look out in the next 12 to 24 months, like what do you want to improve on? Maybe it's writing. Because, you know, let's say if you're going to be an SEO or a content marketer, you're going to need to do a lot of writing. And if you're not there yet, <clears throat> maybe that's the superpower that you want to grow into, right? But it's important to be aware. All right, moving on to back to some digital marketing stuff. These are the main types of media when we're talking about online. You have owned, earned, paid, shared. I'm the biggest fan of owned. And I talk about this whether I'm talking to a small company or a large company like Allstate. What you want to master is that relationship between you. When I say you, I mean your business. It's the business and the buyer. And nothing in between, no friction. And when you work with the own media bucket, it's the website, it's the blog, it's the email marketing. There is no friction between you and the buyer. The relationship that you have with that consumer or business buyer is frictionless. Whereas if I go to earned, if I go to paid, if I go to sh uh, shared, there's all these barriers that are controlled by algorithm. Am I saying don't focus on the other three? No. As a matter of fact, those three are just as important. But you, as a business... Businesses have to really, um, if they want sustained growth and visibility and showing up on page one and driving leads and traffic to their website, they're going to have to master the own media, right? Okay, so here's another button, you guys. So I gave you three ways also. Communication is important. So maybe you're like, you know what, Alex? I'm not going to use the tiny URL. I'm going to click the button. Maybe you're not a button clicker. Maybe you're just going to, uh, scan the QR code. I don't know, but I, I'm just giving you that to think about that often um, companies will, will create a landing page or a website or a flyer and they'll give you this long URL when people are just busy and they're moving fast. So you got to give people different ways to communicate with you. Now, if I were trying to sell you something right now, I would also have my phone number and the email. 
but I, you know, it's giving you an abundance of ways to communicate with me. Um, and then I give you a little bit of information, which you'll find in this research from the Pew Research Center about the generations. And, and it's such interesting information because 10 years ago, all marketers would talk about was millennials, millennials, millennials. And then now all marketers talk about is Gen Z, Gen Z. And I don't know enough to tell you one way or another. And, and even for my own generation, Gen X, it's very different depending on who you talk to, whether it's a male or a female, this level of education, that income, region of the country. There's no one size fits all, right? So uh, take a look at the report and see if you fit into any of those buckets. All right. Super important. I wanted to really talk about the analytics piece of digital marketing because it is going to be super important for you guys. I think we have a question here. Um, sorry about that. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. You're having issues there. No, no problems. And you guys can interrupt me at any point. It's no worries. OK, it's a, we're, we're all trying to accomplish the same thing here and and uh, learn a lot. So but Google Analytics is changing in July. They've had the same product for 15 years, and now they're going to go to GA4. I don't like it too much, but it is the, the, the best tool because it's the best free tool. There are better web analytics tools out there, uh, but they cost a lot of money. So most small businesses use Google Analytics. Therefore, you're going to have to learn Google Analytics. You can get certifications done for, uh, for free still. Um, and what it does is it tells us everything that happens on not only your website, but your digital footprint, where, what social media channel you're, you're um, having the best conversions in, how long they're staying on your website, what pages they're leaving from, what are the top keywords, what are the sources. Like, for example, if we look at this particular uh, report here, you've got acquisition, behavior, and conversions. This happens all the time. I'll work with a brand and a brand will say, oh, we're killing it on social media. We're generating a lot of sales from social media. And I'll go to their web analytics and maybe the acquisition, the traffic looks good, the behavior looks good. But then I go all the way to the last column here, conversions, and I'll see zero for social media. And I'll, I'll say, wow, what happened there? So there is what people say and there is what the data tells. Um, I will tell you that most marketers today, even in Fortune 500 companies, will agree with you that there is no 100% uh, uh, or, or platform that will give you 100% attribution for your marketing uh, efforts and marketing spend because there's just so much going on, right? So for example, tonight, let's say I was tracking you guys. And in one of those links that I, that I gave you guys or the QR codes, you were like, Ooh, that report is really interesting. And then I, I tracked it, that it came from, let's say Boca and your IP address and all of that. But let's say that you texted a picture of that to a friend in California. How am I going to know that the conversion came from this presentation at FAU? Impossible. So that's what we call dark dark analytics, there's no way for you to know every touch point because that's just the nature of the world of online. Uh, Want to think about your favorite mobile apps. So many people spend time on their, on their smartphones. So it's important, even if you're not going to be a mobile marketer, it's likely that at some point you're doing marketing for a company that has an app. Okay, I did, I did marketing for a large alarm company and great, they have their website and their platform, their portal, but they also have an app. So we had to market to those app, to the app users as well. You know, and it was something that I was not used to doing. So we had to learn uh, Google's uh, ad platform. It's called Firebase. We had no idea how to market. We didn't know how to do digital marketing, but digital marketing to app users so they can download it, do the demo, sign up, totally different. So it's not something that's usually taught um, at the universe at, at sort of like your level and even more experienced marketers. It's a niche area, but it's something you want to think about because most tech companies, if you go work for a tech company, they're going to have an app. 
more, more than likely. And they're going to want to market that, that app. So it's really important for you to understand like the user experience of apps and how that plays into your digital marketing. Uh, branding. I, I really like this um, uh, graphic here. Uh, I didn't make it. I've been using it for years, but I like it. And it always registers with people that even though when we think of branding, we think of storytelling, we think of colors, logos, things like that. You know, it a brand is not stuck only using the colors from their brand guide, okay? So if you're doing a digital marketing campaign, let's say you're Nikon there at the top. Okay, fine, it's yellow. You, you could come across a Nikon ad on social media that uses different colors and still can use their, their um, brand guide, right? So when you're thinking branding, don't be stuck on one specific color, especially if you're going to go to the creative side of marketing. Um, personas, uh, here's a button, the access to persona builder. So it's a fun activity for you to do, um, to really understand who your buyers are. So any given company is going to have dozens and dozens of personas for their products and services. And the personas are the, the that target audience with the demographics, that psychographics, right? Their age, their income, their education, their location, what their interests are what their affinity groups are. Are they married? Are they, are they divorced? Do they rent? Do they own? Do they own one car, two cars? Do they have pets? So in marketing, when a company comes to me, I ask in depth, who's your target audience? Great. Now tell me who your customers are. Typically, there's a difference there. But the more you dig into who their customers are, the better the marketing campaign can be. But I can't do that if I don't have personas. So you're never going to build a, a, an ad campaign if you don't know the personas. Super, super important. The funnel, I put up these two funnels here because uh, the funnel is broken. There is no such thing as a funnel. Everybody talks about funnels and more funnels. But a funnel suggests that every buyer has a journey that is either vertical or horizontal. It, it doesn't work that way. We all take different paths to buy the products and services we want to buy. So it's important for you to, you know, not think so much about the funnel, but think about every interaction, all the different touch points through the customer journey. Um, but, I, but I know that in the world of digital marketing, you're going to get thrown flip funnels. You're going to get told about click funnels and landing pages. It, it doesn't really work that way. Every buyer is different. So landing page is super important. Now, if you are on the paid side of marketing, let's say you said, you know what, I want to do Google ads and Microsoft ads and Facebook ads, TikTok ads, whatever paid ad, you're going to really want to learn how to do landing pages. Landing pages is, is there so that you can convert that user, the traffic, from a lead to a sale. And typically, a landing page is going to look like this. It's got a logo. Uh, headline, an image or video, um, a couple of bullet points, trust factors, and a form. Now, if I were selling, if I were selling, let's say cosmetics, that that wouldn't look like a form. That would look like the product with the shopping cart, right? But the form is typically on the right, and then you have that call to action button that you see there. Get my copy now. Call to action buttons that work well. The color, um, every study out there will tell you it's the orange the 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 green and the blue buttons so you could do other colors but the orange button and amazon really mastered that you know the a particular shade of orange that just registers with with people and so if you want more conversions that's you got to get into understanding colors as well but landing pages super super important for you guys to to understand uh, next up here, we have keywords. I'm sure you guys have covered keywords extensively in class. These are some of the tools that we use in everyday uh, marketing. There's hundreds of tools. The thing about these tools is they're not accurate. <laughs> so even SEM Rush, the, like the Cadillac of SEO research, they're not always going to be accurate. You know, you can pull up a keyword research for 10 keywords and use all the same filters on 10 tools and you'll get 10 different things. So 
this is why as a marketer, as a digital marketer, you're going to have to understand how to work with different tools um, because it's, it's what we call our marketing stack. So most marketing agencies or brands will have what we call our marketing stack, our marketing stack and our tech stack. So these are the technologies and the marketing tools that we use in everyday um, uh, campaigns. And yes, there's like hundreds of them. And sometimes you don't use one for a specific campaign, but that's what it takes in order for you to build campaigns that are successful. Now, I do love SCM Rush's um, checklist here. It's got uh, five different columns. These five different columns you see at the top of the header, SEO basics, keyword research, technical SEO, on page and off page. So if you're getting into digital marketing, SEO is going to come up at some point, even if you are going into a different discipline like social or content, but it's going to be important. And so you want to know at bare minimum this checklist here and how that plays into the overall marketing strategy. And so you can download that checklist and see what each one of those mean as well. Another acronym that you're going to get to know really well is EAT. EAT is expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. So that's how, you know, even though Google uses about 200 different um, uh, ranking factors, and that's what they tell us, but believe me, even people who work at Google don't have all the secrets to how the, the algorithm works. What, what Google uses is the EAT um, standard to be able to move different websites and different content from position one to you know, position 10 or 100. Because now, as I'm sure you guys know, we no longer search on Google from page one to page two, page three. It's just a feed. And that feed, you're either going to have paid ads, organic ads, or local ads. But the EAT, interestingly enough, um, is controlled not just by the algorithm. The way EAT works, I think I have it on the next page here. Uh, let's see here. It's coming up. Uh, it's coming up somewhere here. No, it's not coming up. Okay. Um, I, I thought I had it up there. Oh, I know. It's Get the Guide. Sorry about that. If you guys click Get the Guide, it's going to take you to um, Google's Content Raiders. So look that up, Content Raiders. These are people who rate content on Google, and there's more than 20,000 of them. They work remotely. They typically get paid between $15 to $30 an hour, and the algorithm will go through all this content on, on any given day on everyone's website, and if and if it doesn't meet the EAT criteria, these, these raters will go in and change things manually, okay? And so, and, and sometimes it might be things that are, you're, you're breaking uh, the, the compliance, right? Maybe it's pornography. Maybe it's, uh, you know, uh, child trafficking or something like that or gambling. So there's a lot of different things that the raters are looking for. But it's not only happening um, with an algorithm. So the local, uh, if you're using Google uh, business profile, which most businesses will use, as you can see here, I pulled up FAU Boca. You will see on the right-hand side here, that's the knowledge graph. Super simple. A tool that you want to get to know, it's free, and it allows you to... Um, uh, manage the reviews, manage the content, and it's good for SEO. All right, content marketing. Content marketing is a huge part of digital marketing, and we're not going to learn this whole periodic table, but I love this periodic table by eConsultancy because what it does is it color codes for you the different areas of content marketing. As you can see there, the colors, strategy format, content type, platform metrics, goals, Woo, it could blow your mind, you know, like you start to look at a content marketer in a whole different way. And I, I just have so much respect for content marketers, especially inbound marketers, because it, there's no one content marketing person that's going to be able to master all of this. So you can see how we started at the top with digital marketing, and then we kind of came down to one discipline. And even within this discipline, there's a bunch of different routes that you can go to. All right, so since I'm talking about content, there's no way I cannot talk about 
chat GPT, the elephant in the room that is making companies like JP Morgan. They just announced last week, JP Morgan and a bunch of other uh, Fortune 500s. You are not allowed to use chat GPT, not at work, not on their devices. They don't want anything to do with it. And Bing is like, hey, no, we spent a bunch of money to make people use this. So I've been using the tool since uh, December. It's good, but it's not going to solve all problems. You still need the human touch. Yes, I can create a blog post. Yes, I can do a couple of little things, but it's not going to replace people as we know it. Okay, so um, you're not going to be able to cheat on your essay <laughs> or, or DOA will catch you because there's already software to, to make sure that you're not plagiarizing. So the same will work with content. I have, I've already built a few case studies to show that if I asked uh, ChatGPT to create a blog post about XYZ and I give it context, I've been able to find using duplicate checker that that content is duplicate. So how can I use that content if it's duplicate? Again, this thing has been so, a little bit oversold um, and it's early on. So chat GPT is, 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 we don't know yet, but it's not going to steal your job. Trust me. Um, all right. Let's see where we're at in the next one here. All right, the next one is not sexy. I know most people are gonna be like, oh my God, Alex, email marketing is so boring. Uh, not boring, lucrative, huge returns on investment. And I have the little call to action button there, free subject line tester. That's a part of marketing is you guys coming up with you know, headlines. It's you guys coming up with call to action buttons. And in the case of email marketing, once you do these five different steps, you're gonna come up with a subject line. Subject lines have to be creative, otherwise people don't open. And that subject line tester by Omnisend, you can test it. And you can, it will break it down for you, all the different elements, it'll give you a score and tell you if you're on the right track. Um, so definitely use it, it's a cool tool. But here's, here's an example of one of the thousands of Fortune 500 companies like Spanx who uses email for, you're on their website, Within, you know, five, 10 seconds, boom, you get a pop-up or you get a little widget that's like, hey, Doa, give me your email because the email is so valuable, right? And I know you guys may be like, oh, that's so crazy. I, I don't do that. Maybe you don't, but, you know, like three quarters of the population do. Um, but I would be curious to know with Gen Z um, how often you guys give out your email. I think you give out your email from my, my own research, much easier than, than other generations. But I might be wrong. I don't know. But email works. You guys got to master email. Um, so here's a great example of a newsletter that has been on fire since the pandemic. This guy, uh, Nathan, I believe. Yeah, his name is Nathan. He created this newsletter, Nathan Tankis, about uh, finance. So he's a young guy um, and you know, lost his job and is like, hey, I'm going to create a newsletter and the newsletter now earns him millions of dollars. Now, again, just like influencers, I don't want to just pick out the outlier that, that blew up. No, but there is tons of newsletter um, uh, creators who are making a living doing that. No different than creators like podcasters or YouTubers. What you'll notice in any of those different channels is that you have to really commit. So for like Nathan, you're not really going to find him on social media. His thing is the newsletter. And he has sponsors who pay him to do more content. Newsletters and email still works very much. All right. So those are like my favorite things in digital marketing that can give you a high return on investment. But next we have paid search. All paid search, whether it's Google, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, it's all auction based. Whatever company is willing to pay the highest price for that click or that eyeball, that's who wins. So there's no real like, you know, magic to search. It's like if the client has the budget, they're going to get a lot of clicks. It's that simple. You know, of course, you still have to have good um, uh, calls to action and ads. Like, look at these ads. I pulled up these ads yesterday. Dentist in Boca Raton. And the first three results were paid because we see the little ad right there, right? And, you know, if I were price driven, I would click on the first one, $79, new patient exam. Okay, sounds better than the other one, 
But if I'm someone who is more um, concerned about the reputation or reviews, the second one would have been the one I clicked on, right? Because they're saying they have five five star reviews. Great. Now, and of course, you're still going to double check that. But again, the point is, you have different different ways to approach that consumer doing search. So Amazon is the other big elephant in the room when it comes to paid search. As you can see here, the only way to win on Amazon, if you're going to be an Amazon seller, is by doing ads. You know, and here I was searching for best car, best car wash soap. You get all these results, but these are all paid. And so there's an opportunity there for you guys as well, not only with Google ads, but Facebook. I have at the end a bunch of links where you can get free certifications. Amazon Amazon advertising platform will give, you can take up to, I believe, five different certifications. Believe me, if you intend on being a digital marketer and you come across an opportunity, let's say, to go work at Chewy down there in South Florida, it's an e-commerce, you're going to need to know Amazon because these e-commerce e brands depend on, on Amazon. Um, so here's Meta, of course, you know, Facebook. It, it's still the lowest cost per acquisition. If you're running paid ads, whether it's on social or search, Facebook's still going to be the cheapest uh, option out there. Um, definitely not the most, the most, um, uh, the, the one that's going to deliver the highest results. And I can tell you that from every client, but it's the one that you can reach the most people. All right. All right, so on to social media. I didn't put a lot into social media because honestly, I'm looking at the social media experts here. I'm assuming that all you guys, when I asked you that question about what apps do you guys use, I'm assuming you guys know way more about the apps than me or Doa, right? Because I'm not, I just don't, I've got four kids. I don't have time to be on the social media these days. Um, but my team does and they're good at what they do. And it's interesting to me, um, like TikTok. Like we have a client where they generate a ton of leads with our ads on TikTok. And if you would have asked me two years ago if that product was going to be doing great on TikTok, I would have said probably not. But it's surprising. So it's important not to, not to count, uh, uh, count out certain um, platforms. What I would tell you guys, one of the best things you guys can do that I've seen over time uh, in my last seven years... Um, not only mentoring, speaking, but also hiring um, undergrads is create your own blog. Above and beyond, it's going to be the, 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 least of, the least amount of work. Like if you go do a YouTube channel, a podcast, um, it, it, those things take a lot of time and you may get nowhere. And it may not be that, that valuable when you're looking for a job, but a blog hits on everything. It hits on design. It hits on content, SEO, email marketing. If I, if, if I were starting out right now, that's what I would do. I would start a blog and I would practice every element of digital, uh, WordPress, web design, content, SEO, everything. This little button here takes you to HubSpot's blog idea generator. You put in there five keywords. Let's say one of you guys here, you're you're, you're huge with fitness. You're like, man, fitness is my thing. If I could find a job in fitness because I'm a workout superstar, great. Go write blogs about that, right? And what you do is you put in those keywords. It's going to spit out about 250 blog post ideas for you. And then from there, you could do your keyword research. But let me tell you, this project right here, I've had students use it as a portfolio when they're um, looking for a job. I'm telling you, it's gold. Because they, that, that interviewer is going to ask, oh, really? So tell me about your blog. Great. You're, you're going to say, I, I not only did the content, the design, but I'm also doing the analytics on the back end. It's like you own that. It's yours. So I would say blog idea would be one of the best things you guys can do. You know, in marketing, we are taught, and we've talked about it here today, that every time you enter a new campaign, you do the target audience. You find out what their pain points are, what makes them tick. 
And Stan Lee is telling us the opposite, like, forget the audience. Do, but hey, man, that's being real. That's being real to yourself. So I think that that's why it's so important when I talked earlier at the beginning about really dig deep in, in, into your skills, industry. Do I want to work for brand? Do, like, you really need to do that because if you're passionate about the subject matter, it's going to be easy for you to do it. If not, you're going to have to just rely on data and that'll get boring real quick. So anyways, it's, it's counter, but it's awesome. And I think we see that with TikTok. Why TikTok obviously has exploded in the last few years is that you have amateur creators who are creating the craziest, like the most niche topics that I'm like, what? Somebody's interested in that? And, and I, I'm not, and, and I'm sure if I created something on TikTok, it'd be the same, but you don't need the whole world to like it, right? You just need a certain number of people to engage with you and become your raving fans. And that's goes for the same for, for, uh, brands. Now, when it comes to influencers and creators, they are not digital marketers. So let's start there. You are hard pressed to find an influencer or creator that's on YouTube, on TikTok, on podcasts, who's going to who's gonna tell you, yes, I'm a big digital marketer. No, they're a story, these people are storytellers. They're creatives. Their job is to create. Those are the different platforms. So you don't want to mistake one for the other. Influencers and creators, I liken them more to entrepreneurs. They are creating an art. And then they're putting it out in the world. And if they do, you know, if they, they really create something unique, then it gives them an opportunity to do digital marketing too. But almost every creator I know, and I know some creators with 10, 15 million followers, because we're on these platforms where we have to engage with these influencers, they do no digital marketing. They just create, they are the visionaries, they're the talking head, and everybody else does digital marketing. They don't even want to know about the data. Because, you know, if you're making that kind of money, you've got people who are, who, who are doing that. But, but it is a channel. And if you look at the different levels, nano, micro, mid-tier, macro, and mega. When you get to mega influencer, I'm not a mega. I'm, I don't even think I'm a nano. But that's because I don't want to be out there on social media that way. And I, I'm going to tell you something else, too. There are plenty of businesses. I, uh, I, I have a client that does half a billion dollars in business. That's a lot of, that's a pretty big company, half a billion dollars. I'm not going to tell you their name because they're located in Boca, but they, they have over 500 employees just in the U.S. and around the globe. They have little to no presence in social media. And they serve consumers and businesses. So my point is, digital is important, Social is important, but it's not for every company and every business, right? There are different ways to engage with customers. Um, but if you choose this route to be an influencer, there's money to be made there. So these are the, the, the five platforms that we work on. Uh, actually, four. I, I left out the other one that we no longer work with. So these are Social Publi. They're out of Spain. And when we're looking for influencers for specific campaigns, we go on there, we recruit. They market, they do the posts, right, for clients. And then the, if at bare minimum, if you're just starting out in digital marketing, these are the free tools uh, that you want to use. Some of my favorite tools here, Answer to Public is great, uh, such a great tool for content. Obviously, SEM Rush, um, and what else? And Canva and WordPress. I love WordPress. Um, and of course, Canva. And we're back to web analytics because I wanted to hammer on it again. You're going to get asked that question. If you're in digital marketing, even if it's just SEO or social media, whatever the, the, the discipline is, never go into an interview and tell the interviewer, I hate data, I don't like math, I don't like science, because it's not going to work. So again, if, if you're going to be in digital marketing, you've got to know at least the basics of uh, data, analytics, and insights across the platforms, right? Email, social, and web. Now, here are some of the resources that I know for sure um, employers are looking for. At bare minimum, they're looking for your um, uh, to be certified in Google's products, Google Ads, Google Analytics, Facebook, Blueprint, or Meta, Blueprint. 
Um, BizHack is another way you can get some certifications. OMCP is really high level. OMCP is an uh, online marketing certified professional organization. They're more for the big brands. So let's say you said, I, I'm, I really, I want to go work for the Miami Heat doing digital marketing, which by the way, I have a friend who works for the Miami Heat doing digital marketing. They're going to look for a certification in addition to your uh, degree. They're going to look for a certificate from like OMCP. And, and it's a really hard test to take. It's like really deep. And there's a lot of data in there as well. But these are some of the ones that I would recommend. The meetup for the WordPress Meetup South Florida group you can find on meetups.com. Great place for you to hone in on your web design, web development skills. Not that you wanna be a web developer, and if you do, God bless you. If you wanna be a designer, great. But even if you don't want to, there's nothing like being able to make simple updates and changes to a website without, you know, without needing to create a ticket for the web developer, right? So it's nice for you to go into a job interview, let's say if their website for their company runs on WordPress, for you to say, hey, I know how to do the basics of WordPress. It's just gonna help you, right? So another resource for you to do networking, this was something that Doa was very specific about, networking and opportunities. Um, there's no better networking than face-to-face Okay, and there's no better place in South Florida for networking with the top digital marketers than Safima, South Florida Interactive Marketing Association. They've been around for like 20 years. The next meeting is in Pompano, I believe at the Women's Club. You can look it up on their website um, and you can register clicking that button. It's April 20th. They're going to be talking chat GPT. And, you know, there's a lot of marketers who are obsessed with chat GPT and that's okay. But you're going to meet a lot of um, um, recruiters. You're going to network with a lot of the movers and shakers in the industry. There's a lot of great agencies that are members of Safima. So if you want a career in digital marketing, even if it's somewhere else, this is a great place for you to start network face to face. So one way for you guys to impress people when you meet them face to face because they have the impression that Gen Z doesn't like paper. I'm I'm sure that's true. They're always impressed when I send 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 younger people and they come with business cards. So just a little tip there. They come they're like, oh my God, look. There's like 20 of them and like one of them had business cards and the one who had business cards stood out. Older people like me, we still like paper. So, you know, you, 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 you got to do some business cards, even if the card just says your name, your, your email address, and your phone number. Carry that, because some people are not going to want to do the whole, um, okay, let's connect and scan this QR code, whatever, you know. So business card's a great way. Here's the um, OMCP report. Because of COVID, they haven't done one report since 2020. 2019 was the last one. But this report, when you guys click on the call to action button, will take you to the stats. This report is incredibly powerful because this is real data from uh, Fortune 1000 companies and what these digital marketers get paid for different disciplines. And typically, these positions are not just management. There's entry-level ones too. And typically with at least three years experience. So it kind of gives you an idea for the potential for what you can earn in this industry. All right, the last few pages here, and then we'll open up to Q&A, is all QR codes. There's a ton of resources. If you scan or go to the URL or click here, I've got a free course for you on, um, on Udemy. I've got uh, the podcast. Okay, this podcast I had this guest on my podcast. This guy is a professor at MIT. His name is Mark Hirschberg. Best book for career for young people. It's called the um, Career Toolkit. It is amazing. I'm telling you, get this book before you graduate. Even if you just download it, uh, go to his website, listen to the audio book. It's, it's great. Not because he was on my podcast, because you could go directly to his website. But this guy is on point. He really knows what employers are looking for. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to ask you if you want to um, subscribe to my newsletter, 
It's free. I don't share information. If you subscribe, I have a an automated system that will then send you an email and then it will ask you. It'll give you some freebies. Um, I don't have one here, but I have these like pretty journals and they get sent out with a nice little pen and a bookmark and you get some free stuff. So it's free stuff. It doesn't cost anything. And the last slide here is Simon Sinek. I love this um, quote. Dream big, start small, but most of all, start. So whatever you guys are thinking about, just just do it. No matter no matter how insurmountable it seems. And uh, my information's there at the bottom. You guys are gonna have the slides, and I want to say thank you and good luck, and then open it up to questions.